Hi. <laughs> Welcome to my YouTube channel, Houseplant Friends. Today we have a very special video. It's very requested. I'm going to be showing you all of my houseplants. I have over, I want to say 200, but I don't want you guys to count and then be like, you lied. So I have so many plants that aren't planted up. I know that I have over 200, but I'm just not going to count because that's just too much. So welcome to my house. If you want to drink with me, you can. I'm having lemonade and vodka. I normally wouldn't be <laughs> drinking. It's only, well, I guess it's five now. It's five o'clock somewhere. But I just got back from a wedding venue tour. It is not going to work out with that venue, but that's okay. I just had some wine there and I was like, let's just keep keep the good feelings going. So I'm having this. Reed does not drink. Also, she's holding the camera. Hi guys. <laughs> I drink nothing. Reed's gonna be talking sometimes, so if you hear a voice that doesn't have a mouth, it's Reed's. That's correct. <laughs> that's correct. Okay, so let's just start with my darkest corner, my shade plants, <laughs> which you can roast me all you want. I know that they're not all shade plants, also look, I used so much newt that they just started sending me jugs. <laughs> Buynewt.com forward slash Ashley, it's the best fertilizer you'll ever use and you'll thank me later. You can try nine gallons for nine dollars, which is way cheaper than anything else if you go to Buynewt.com forward slash Ashley with lowercase a. Okay, let's start. This is where I sit with my MacBook. This is my MacBook's table, but he's in my bed right, right now, um, sleeping, taking a nap because he's tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, these are my plants. This is my Piccolo Banda. Here, let me move it over here so you can get some more light. This is my Piccolo Banda. It is my favorite peperomia next to the string of turtles, which unfortunately I won't be showing you today. Um, some tragedies have befallen my string of turtles, and I found out that a massive spider was living in it and a bunch of other bugs. Oh, no. They weren't pests, but to me they are. So, um, also my 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 freaking string of turtles was basically like a bald man who only had bangs. So like the, there's like no plants growing on the top or on any of the other sides. It was just this one section. So I just did what had to be done, and we don't we don't have her anymore, oh, which gosh. is really sad. But I just figured I can just get another one at some point. Our Lowe's gets them sometimes, <gasps> so I just have to wait. Reed's excited too. Yeah. yeah. So then I have my two Stromanthi Trio Stars. This one is damaged. So when you look at it and you're like, oh my gosh, what's happening to it? Um, I had it in direct sun. So she's healing from that. <laughs> Don't put your Stromanthes or uh, Tenanthes or Calatheas in the direct sun. But we do have a bunch of new leaves coming in like this one right here, super brand new. And she's doing okay. We just won't be putting her in the sun anymore. This is another Stromanthi Trio star I have. This is a much larger one. I got this one from a sponsorship, rest in peace. And uh, this is a gorgeous one. I've never had a big one because I've never been able to afford them. So it was super nice when that sponsor sent it my way. Um, I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> I That's keep all it, you gotta but say. Whenever, whenever I look at this plant, I also feel a couple of other emotions. It's my second angel wing begonia. Use some nice light with her. This guy is gorgeous. This is a begonia maculata whitey eye. And she's got a couple new leaves, like right here you can see. There's a new leaf there. And this one right here just opened up. And I know I'm touching my begonia. I would never normally do this, but I know that this one's really healthy. So this one also right here is new. And we're gonna we're working on a new leaf right here. So I'm excited to see that. But that begonia I got from a succulent day a couple of weeks ago. And I just saw that they had them and I know that I love my other one so much that I got from Costa Farms. Just wanted to have a second one. And then right here is my, my little board. So I have what was at the time the order of my favorite plants, but this is not accurate anymore. It's a philodendron, <laughs> anthurium, alcadia, and hoya. Right now, if I had to pick top four, it would be Hoya. Hoya. <laughs> Hoya and then probably Anthurium and that's it. That's kind of all that's I'm it. that's all I'm doing right now. Philodendron are great. Oh yeah. Hmm? I was gonna say, oh yeah, that one too, but that's also a Hoya. So I'm really just vibing with Hoya right now. Begonias are great too, but I'm vibing with Hoya. I'm having a lot of fun with Hoya. 
I have a lot of very specific favorites right now. Then I have this is my philodendron micans. I said that sentence super weird. But I got this from Ariane Botanicals for $12 over the mail. And it's put out a lot of new leaves since I got it and I'm very excited for it to start trailing. I might put it in a hanging pot, we will see. But this is one of four of my micans. Then we have this beast, which is my Monstera Deliciosa. If you've been watching me at all, you've seen this in my videos, it's hard to hide. This is its newest leaf, and we haven't had a new leaf in months, but that's my fault, because I always keep this guy in an area where there is literally no humidity, so 100% my fault. Now, the resting humidity in my apartment is, well, this is pretty low right now. It says 56%. I don't know if you can read mm -hmm. that, but normally it's 65% resting, and then over by my actual humidifiers, which we'll get to in a second, it's normally about 80 to 90% humidity over there, so. We're doing good. Then this is my variegated emerald ripple peperomia, and he's absolutely gorgeous. I cannot believe this. They sold this also at a succulent day. I got it on the same day as I got my begonia, and this is my favorite leaf. And then also, wow, sorry my nails. Obviously I haven't been able to go anywhere for them, but yeah, I just love this plant. I don't normally love peperomia other than piccolo banda and string of turtles, but these are definitely, I definitely really, really love this one. When my parents were in town, if you guys watched that haul, I got this Calathea ornata. I've been talking about this plant for a long, long, long time. I absolutely adore it. It is definitely my second favorite Calathea that I own, and honestly ever. Um, and it's just so easy. You don't have to do anything but water it. This one you can let dry out a little bit too and it'll stay fine. It prefers moderate humidity so anyone can take care of this one. And honestly, it's a very low light plant. I gave one to my fiance's mom and she still has it and it's still thriving. And I gave it to her like last year, so. Okay, that is this little area right by my computer. And I love this. I did this recently. Um, I don't think I showed you guys this at all, but I completely, here, let me move this so you can come over here. I completely changed everything about this area and I had a video recently where I did do a different thing to it and I called it making my desk into a jungle because I want to work under a jungle. <laughs> and I ended up moving all this around. So this is completely different. This was actually a stand for my bird of paradise, which you may also realize is no longer here. She died. Um, I do not know why. As far as I could tell, I was doing everything right. And then one day her leaves just curled up and they turned orange. <laughs> And so I don't know if I was underwatering her, but I will be giving Bird of Paradise another try. But now I'm using this one to hold my Monstera up. So that way it cascades over my entire desk. I think it's super cool. And I can just, I can just sit here while I'm editing and I look up and there's just a beautiful Monstera over <laughs> my desk. And it's got enough space that if I want to work all the way up in my chair, because my chair goes up pretty high. My my monitors don't don't hit it at all. It's amazing. Now let's move on to my cuttings. So these are my cuttings. They're kind of hard to see. I can't really move more than this, but these were all the plants I had in my greenhouse that had root rot. So here we have begonia listata, which is this gorgeous begonia. It's also fuzzy. And then this one here is begonia berkeleyi. This guy actually has an iridescent flash. I don't know if I'll be able to get it to trigger for you, but it does iridescence blue, which is cool. Then back here, we have Begonia U667, and then another one here, but this is a new leaf, so that's pretty cool. Then over here, we have we have Philodendron Melanochrysum. These are all cuttings that are rooting, and then we have my Philodendron White Princess, which is still putting out new leaves. I don't know if you guys can see, but right there, we're getting a new leaf. Then we have my Begonia Maculata cuttings that I'm rooting. I need to give this more water, so they're okay. But these are really tough. Like I was touching these the other day and they're very tough. This is from my original Begonia Maculata Whitey Eye that I kind of, it ended up dying in the move. I don't know what happened, but it just didn't make it. And then we have my two Syngonium Albos, which are all, almost already fully rooted again. So I'm really excited to replant those up and I'm actually trading one to Heather's Hoyas. You guys can go subscribe to her because we're gonna be doing a trade this coming week, so. And then we have this tragedy. 
This is my my beloved varicosum. Um, I'm going to chop it right here and try propagating it again because it just died. I think it just, it just, I had to cut off all the roots and it couldn't support all the leaves. So this is the only leaf that's left and I think we're gonna lose this one too, but I am going to try to reroot it, so. Then we will move to my table. So this is more or less all of my Hoyas. <laughs> this is so many of my Hoyas and I love them all so much. <laughs> Not a Hoya. Begonia maculata whitey eye. This is the one I got from Costa Farms. When I got it, I had to cut off all the leaves except for one, which is this bad boy. And then we got all of these new leaves. This one is doing kind of tough. It was too close to a grow light for a while. But all of these other leaves are new within the last month. It's incredible. This guy is just growing like crazy. So if you do see Costa Farms begonias, yes, they might be in a little bit of rough shape. But if you just give them a little TLC, you're going to have a gorgeous, massive begonia. So then over here, we have another begonia. This is begonia escargo. And what you guys might not know is that when escargo comes in, it comes in bright pink which is crazy. You're doing a really good job, Reed. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> you guys can't see, but Reed's having to work around all my grow lights. <laughs> Anyways, this beginning comes in bright pink and we're actually getting another baby. It's hard to see, but right there. Another little baby. So I'm very excited. This begonia does very well. It does like to stay more wet. This is from, again, light bird. I'm trying to figure out where to keep these begonias because these ones like more humidity. So I want to keep them over here but being over here, they get a lot of light, so I'm working on it, but. Let's do the two other plants over here that are not Hoyas first. This is my Rifidophora tetrasperma. If you just watched my repot with me that I did with Reed, you would have seen this guy, and he's doing amazing. The growth is incredible, and he's putting out just so many new leaves, so I'm very excited. I did turn a Rifidophora down the other day at Lowe's because I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna love the ones that I have, <laughs> so. This guy is gorgeous. He's in this cute Ray Dunn pot that can actually become a hanging planter. And he's right in my window and he's absolutely loving life. So I'm glad that I figured out the myth of the Rifidophora tetrasperma because until now, I've never gotten this to grow, so. All right, this best friend that I have is my Monstera borzigiana albo vergata. And its leaves are kind of funky because it's curving towards the light, so. Some of these leaves are <laughs> being super silly, but uh, this is the newest one, this guy. And I was really worried because this leaf has almost no variegation. So when I saw this, I was like, oh dang. But then that happened. So that's exciting. And oh, sorry, <laughs> the moss pole started to tell. <laughs> I almost took Reed out on a date. Ooh, ooh. ooh. <laughs> I, this leaf came to me uh, in the mail, obviously, like up to here. And then it's done this for me since the end of February when I got it, and it is May right now. So pretty excited. And then Ill Exotic sent me this moss pole. You guys will see an unboxing from them either tomorrow or before this video. So I'm not sure what order I'm gonna do that in. And then this pook, pook, this pot is from Brooklyn Ceramics, which I will link in the description because I love her and she makes amazing pottery. This moss pole is so tippy though. <laughs> I need a deeper pot. Okay, let's do it. Hoyas. Hoya macrophylla or marginiata. It's got a difficult name, but you guys will be seeing the name on the screen. This guy comes in green with very strong veins and uh, variegation just on the sides, which is pretty cute. There are unvariegated versions of this plant, but I believe they're actually much harder to find than the variegated versions. If you can pick yourself up one of these, you absolutely should. Then here we have Hoya AH049. This is a very massive Hoya, as you can see compared to my hand. And it's very veiny and has some splashing. I'm in love with this Hoya. It is taking a while to root. I think we actually do have a root down there finally, but I've been trying to root this guy for a while. It has been picky. So then this right here is Hoya Panchoi or Panchoi. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it is this beautiful lime green with a very, very thick cardboardy leaf. Like really just imagine cardboard with a red lining around the sides. I adore this Hoya. I cannot wait to pot it up someday. Then we have two more Hoyas. 
We have Hoya Waliniana, which is this guy right here. And I'm working on sun stressing him, but it is taking some time. And then here we have Hoya Hushkeliana, I think is how you pronounce it, with a little peduncle. So that is where it will flower right there. Wow, that looks really good. Mm -hmm. Makes my nails look garbage. <laughs> then we have Hoya Weyedii variegata, and this guy is growing right now. We have two growth points, I believe. Oh, three actually. He's throwing hands. So we have this one right here, this little growth point. Then we have this brand new growth point right here, which you might not be able to see. Right here. Oh, it's so hard to see. There we go. Yeah, right there. And then this one right here, which is a much larger growth point. All these three leaves are new. And I just love this plant. It just has this like mosaic of green and white. And while a lot of plants that are variegated like this, they, they look a little bit different. This just kind of looks like watercolor. Like you really just took a brush and drew all those strokes on. It's so gorgeous and I just, I love it. And I love how much white there is on this particular plant. So I really love this one. And we have this Hoya Curtisii, which is, there's two different kinds in here. I mean, they're both Curtisii, but this one has splash and this one is less splash. I don't know if there's different subspecies name for them, but this one is also growing. So I'm very excited about that. I got these smaller ones uh, or less splashy ones from my friend Hannah. And this one is from Arium Botanicals. Here we have two or three gorgeous Hoyas. So we have Hoya Croniana Super Eskimo. This is hard to see kind of, but it's got this beautiful silvery shine to the leaves, which are just covered in splash. And I got this one from Harley. Then I have this Hoya Memoria, which is this guy with the longer leaves. Not this one, but these guys. And these ones are also rooting. I was rooting them wrong before, so they're doing better now, but everything's fine. And then this is Hoya Sipitangensis, which is a very, very rare Hoya I got from Reclamation PDX last summer. She sent me a box of cuttings and I just love this one. I love how it sun stresses bright red like that. So then I have, oh, I do have another philodendron here. This is philodendron lupinum. It is similar to micans, except it is obviously a different species, but it is a velvet leaf philodendron. Then we have, I guess another one that is not a Hoya. This is my <laughs> Monstera adansonii. He's just having a hard time. I don't really know why he's yellowing, but I've had him in water for months, so that could be why he just doesn't have any soil nutrients. So I potted him up with Reed a few days ago, and he is hopefully gonna give us a new leaf and keep growing for me. Then we have Hoya Deiki, which is this gorgeous Hoya I just got recently from Reclamation PDX. And it is this gorgeous veiny Hoya. You can't really tell, but it is in the shape of kind of a heart. It's like a carry eye, but if it was a little bit more like paddle-like, I guess. This one's a little deformed, but we still love her. All right, this is a giveaway plant. I do not own this plant anymore. This girl, Liv, owns this plant. She won it and I have to ship it out. I was going to be shipping it out today, but last night I had a little bit of a health emergency, which I'm totally fine. Please don't worry about me. It happens all the time. But I was just working on pain management, so I didn't get to ship it out today, but it will be going out tomorrow. Then I have this gorgeous, Hoya Carnosa Compacta Variegata, which is giving us new leaves. Look at this bright red variegated leaf. That is so nice. I have noticed that in this pot, Hoya tends to not like to stay hydrated. <laughs> they have a very hard time staying hydrated, so I might end up selling this pot and getting a different one, but I don't know. But anyways, we the other one is growing here too. I did have a third one of these but it ended up dying because I didn't notice it was super dehydrated. So she's given us new leaves. My friend Hannah and Diana each sent me strands from theirs because they found them um, at Home Depot and there wasn't enough for everyone in our little friend group to have one. So I took the L because I have so many plants and then they decided to send me some of theirs, which was super sweet, it made me cry. <laughs> then we have Hoya Callistophylla. Oh my God, Reed, it's growing. <gasps> I'm gonna cry, oh my gosh. This is my favorite Hoya that I own next to my Hoya Caudata Sumatra, which I will show you in a second. But right here, this little spot where these two little hands are coming up, I don't know if you can see, mm -hmm. but this and this 
our brand new growth. So that is incredible. I've had this plant also since last summer and it hasn't done anything for me. I am unbelievably happy right now. I cannot believe this is happening. It wasn't growing and so then I, what I did is I took a pair of scissors to all my Hoyas and all the ones that weren't growing, I cut the ends off of them and that made all of them start to grow. So we're making some progress. <laughs> then I have this pairing, trestled these together. So I have to show you them at the same time. This one on the left is Hoya Rebecca. I've been doing a really good job sun stressing this, if I do have to say so myself. For those of you who don't know, sun stressing is when you do something like this, which is give the plant a lot of light in order to get it to show some reds or oranges in the leaf. So it's actually coming through a lot. You can see right here, down here too. Um, that darker coloring is sun stress. So we're doing pretty good. And then this is Hoya cut out of Sumatra, and this is sun stressing very nicely. It's still working on showing up, but you can see that this leaf is clearly very purple, like a dark brown purple color. And here's its original green. So we're working on it, but Hoya cut out of sun stress is very, very, very nicely. So I'm excited to see it continue to do its thing. Now we have Hoya EPC 301, and this is very exciting. Take a look at that. That is a bunch of new growth happening. I've also had this one for a very long time. I'm very excited that it survived. I got a bunch of Hoya in the mail from Reclamation PDX back before I didn't know how to take care of them. So, or back before I knew how to take care of them. So a bunch of them died, but this one survived. And it's very, very sturdy. It feels like cardboard where you give this a feel. Well, oh. Oh wow. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's a very interesting texture. And we're finally getting this whole new growth right here, which is so exciting. So I cannot wait to see how the new leaves come in. Then we have Hoya Potsii Cow Yai. We are also getting new growth. It is going to be very difficult to see, but this stump right there mm -hmm. is our new growth point. And that's super exciting. We also have some fuzzy roots happening. And this guy's nice because he's very flimsy. Like, even when he's healthy, he's just very, very flimsy. And he kind of just bends around and does his own thing. He's got three nice, gorgeous veins. And this is also a very rare form of Hoya Potsii. So if you ever get the chance to own a cow yai, you should definitely go for it. Because they're very hard to come by. Here we have another Hoya Curtisii but we've already talked about this one. So we are going to move on. This is normally not right here. I normally have this somewhere else. This is my uh, Anthurium moraquinum seedling I've been taking care of for a long time. That's its root system. <gasps> hold on, hold the phone. I just realized he put out a new leaf. <laughs> Look, let me move my princess. She put out a leaf on me. I'm gonna cry. You keep what are you moving. doing? <laughs> I'm just trying. You have to back up a little bit. There you go. You can't zoom in too far with this lens. It's Let not a see. macro. Oh my gosh, look, he's waving hello. 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 Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <gasps> oh my gosh, look at him. Wow, I thought he was gonna die, but here he is giving me a new leaf. Well, anyways, that's great. <laughs> This is my uh, white princess seedling. Uh, he's not doing the best. And I don't know if he's gonna make it, but we are gonna keep holding out hope for our friend and uh, just just wish him the best of luck. We have Hoya Jennifer. She's big. We just talked about her a couple days ago on my channel. We did an unboxing. She's got this gorgeous deep green veining on kind of like a lime green. Now whenever I say lime in my head, I think string of lime. <laughs> this is of lines. Anyways, I love this Hoya. It's absolutely gorgeous in every way possible. And I'm excited for her to give me some more babies. Give me babies. Give me babies. <laughs> Hoya Skinneriana, which is another Hoya we just very recently talked about. Where's the pink? Look at this. It's getting more pink too. <laughs> Anyways, she's there. And then I have this Hoya Carnosa. Just vibing right here. Just doing his thing. In here, we have Anthurium QTQNC. I'm not going to take him out because he's been having a hard time lately. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But here, let me get over here. You can see that he's losing a leaf. He lost another leaf too recently. 
So I don't know if it's too humid in there or what. The new leaf is totally fine. So I filmed this a week ago and I just wanted to give you guys an update. It's doing totally fine. The root system is fine. I think that the two leaves that fell off, so they were the ones that originally came with the plant when I got it, and they were pretty heavily damaged, so I think that the plant's just getting rid of them to make room for new, more healthier leaves. But I do have another Anthurium QTQNC coming in the mail. There was a seller in California who was selling it. They ordered it. It was definitely poached because it arrived to them with no roots at all, which means someone literally just like went out and chopped it and it came from Ecuador. So was it poached or was it grown? It was probably poached and it didn't grow roots for them in one month. So they posted a Facebook. I don't like this plant anymore because it's, they said, I'm giving it the boot because it's not growing for me. You can't do that. It's an endangered species. You can't just be like, I don't want this anymore. You can't get out of your house. So, someone reached out to me and they were like, hey, Ashley, this person is being silly and is telling their endangered silly. plant. <laughs> That's the, the least I can say. <laughs> and uh, they were like, do you want me to ship it to you? I can go pick it up and ship it to you. So I paid the guy. And then he picked it up for me and it's coming tomorrow. So I'm very excited to have a second one. I love him and I cannot wait to meet him. He looks very, very <laughs> cute. Okay, let's do up high plants. First cactus. I do not know its name, so it will be on the bottom of the screen, but this is one of our blue cactus club members. She is gorgeous. If you touch the outside of her skin, basically the blue will rub off, so like don't touch it. I've had this cactus for a long time. I appreciate it a lot. I don't have anything else to say. That's all you gotta it's say. It's cute, it's cute. <laughs> it's, it's like name, it's made out of clay. Its name will be on the bottom of the screen. This guy had millibugs and uh -oh. I treated it. They haven't come back, so I'm very thankful because a couple of the other plants I treated, well, they were cacti that had mealies, all came back, so they're outside. <laughs> They're living their best life outside until I can decide what I'm gonna do. But anyways, this cactus is nice. <laughs> Listen to that sound. It's a good sound. This is Astrophyta Mario Stigma Capricorn. He also has mealy bugs. What the hell? I'm pissed. Okay, well, now I have to watch for mealy bugs on all of my plants over here. Anyways, he's cute, but I'm mad at him. He's gonna get punished. Pylocerius azurus, and this is a gorgeous cactus. I love it. It is also known as the old man cactus. It is a member of the blue cactus club. As you can see, I had to clean it from mealybugs, and so I had to remove some of the blue in certain parts, like up here. But other than that, He's just living his best blue life. I got this from a succulent day when they very first opened. I walked in there the first time and they had it and I lost my mind, so. But I have to check him for mealybugs, so I'm gonna put him over there. Mirio Stigma Nudum. You can see the mealybugs in the corners. So if you guys didn't know to check your cactus for mealies, now you do. Um, apparently mealies can live in the soil and then they'll come up, so I'm gonna have to repot these guys. That's the one thing I didn't do when I Cleaned them of mealybugs, I didn't repot them, which was stupid of me, so. He's confirmed. Confirmed. Best friend Natalie gave to me, I do not, I believe it's Allopharyx. I think that's just its name, just Allopharyx. Just that simple. And I've had it for a while. It is working on a new friend right here. But other than that, she's just chill. She just kind of vibes. Pro cactus oh, wow. Geometricus, it is a circle. It is spineless. Ooh, it needs some water. But it's just a perfect circle and then it will grow new babies in more perfect circles above it. And it's my favorite cactus that exists because look at yeah. that. How could you not love it? Is this cactus, which is my prime suspect for who brought the melee bugs back into my house. Um, this bad boy is a, it's Geometra Zans. Something geometric ends. You guys will be seeing it on the bottom of the screen. I love this cactus. It is gorgeous. It is the original blue cactus. And I got this one from Becca De La Plants uh, when we did a trade a couple months ago. And I just love how it looks. I think that is incredible. I love how the new growth comes in, so. This is Hoya uh, Chelsea. 
This is, I believe, a hybrid of Hoya Crinkle 8 and uh, Hoya Carnosa. It's gorgeous. Its leaves look like little hearts. Let me find a good one. There's a good strand like this. Look at that. That's a heart. Sorry, it's hard to see. Mm -hmm. He's just a little heart. And this is a big one. I got this from North End Organic Nursery. And it's amazing. I've only paid $30 for this whole plant, which was an incredible steal. So I love it. I love her. And she lives on my curtain rod. Then this is a, my second Vikings. I just got this in the mail yesterday from Ill Exotics. They sent this to me as a surprise to say thank you for being my friend <laughs> and happy graduation. And it's gorgeous. It definitely has some male damage. Once it has a couple weeks in my house, I think it'll look all nice and new again. This is one of my, oh, I can't even take it down. So we have to maneuver. This is my Hoya Mauna Loa. Oh my God, you see the new leaf? You're looking the thing and see if you can see it in there. Let me back it up a little bit. Oh, there's no way. It's you can barely see it, but it's right there. This right here. Brand new leaf. Here, let me see that. Mm -hmm. That little pokey. That's the new leaf. <laughs> oh, this one's giving me new growth on the side, but you can't really see it. Anyways, this is my Hoya Mauna Loa. This is a reverse variegated uh, Hoya Carnosa Compacta. I think it is the most gorgeous plant that exists on this earth. And I did, uh, I bent over backwards over water on a bridge of lava to get wow. this plant, basically. <laughs> so for one of these, or two of these strands, I traded a pink princess, and the other one I bought, I believe. No, I traded. What did I trade? What did I trade? I can't remember. I literally can't remember. It doesn't matter. Anyways, I traded, and yeah. Love her. Then up here we have Hoya Matilde. This is, can it even be registered? Can you even see it? Yeah, you can. This is Hoya Matilde. Uh, it's basically a, it's a cross of a Carnosa and a Serpens. And it's just got these tiny little baby leaves and they're so cute. I have it in this little egg planter, basically. And it is giving us new growth. This is a new growth right here. Cute. Then we have variegated string of hearts. This is amazing plant. I also got from a sponsor and we love her. She's gorgeous and I look at her every day with envy because I will never be as beautiful as this plant. <laughs> no one will. <laughs> then we have what I believed was Hoya Finlay Sonia, but now one of my friends is telling me she doesn't think it is because it has, it's soft, it's fuzzy and it has wavy edges. And I guess that those are not characteristics of Finley Sonii, so I don't know. Then we have my Hoya Bertonii. Hoya species affinity Bertonii is the name of this plant. It's got these gorgeous, like, I don't know, cardboardy leaves. Some of them we're working to bring back. The next up high guy, the high guy, is my, Hoya Carnosa Compacta. You might recognize that I actually love this plant. We're getting a bunch of new growth. I just brought this guy into my home and he's already giving me new leaves. Same thing right here and right here. He's curving to the window, so I'm excited. And then our long strand is right here. I know it's so dark. There we go. So yeah, I'm just excited to see what he does with his life because got a full life ahead of him and I'm excited to watch him grow. Reed recently also bought one of these, so he's doing great. Then we have my big ol' staghorn fern. I got this with my parents when we were at Lowe's. This plant cost $14. Can you believe that? <laughs> so uh, of course I got it. The other ones that were in this pot size were $24 for some reason. This was just massive, way bigger than all the other ones, and labeled 14, and the other ones were labeled 24. With that white fuzz, it's so cute. We love a good fuzzy guy. So, you guys are probably like, Ashley. Ashley. Aren't you gonna show us your greenhouse? Well, I would if I had one. I do have one, it's just, I put it away under my bed. Like, I folded it up and everything. I didn't just, I don't just have a massive bed and just, 
I'm being a jokester because I'm drinking, but it's not funny. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Basically, I moved all my plants out here because of my humidifiers, which I'll also tell you about in a minute, but we'll start with my Swami Ferrum. This leaf has always been nasty. When the thrip outbreak happened and I sprayed it with pesticides, it only got worse looking, so I'm probably gonna cut it off, but this one's doing kind of okay. It's also having a hard time. This was a very, this was like a prime suspect for thrips. Like they loved this guy, so. But it's okay, because we're getting a new leaf, which is very nice. Then we have my Warraquianum. This guy is cute. He has been staying out here and he has not been drying out at all. Um, this was from my greenhouse for a while. I just was getting too lazy to refill the humidifier, so. Normally though, he's fine. I did repot him. We are getting new new roots happening so he's doing good out here he gets direct mist from the humidifier right here this thing blows right onto him and when i feel like he needs a little bit extra help i do that <laughs> and then we have my bro marks fantasy this is stunted from my greenhouse because i wasn't uh giving him the right care so he was kind of just like, I just had him up against nothing. He had nothing to climb and grab. So his leaves just kept coming out smaller and smaller and I don't even think this one's ever gonna unfurl. But since then I've given him this little chopstick pole and he's been doing better, but I might also need to give him a thicker mixture because this is just orchid bark, so. Then we have our forgetty eye. This is our new leaf. I thought he was gonna get a lot bigger, but he ended up staying pretty small, which is actually nice because I can't manage massive leaves, so. This one is the old newest leaf, so he had some trouble when he came in. Well, I guess it's the first new leaf that I got when he was in my care. The newest leaf ended up, uh, we had to cut it off because it was broken and I had to prop it up with a fork and it just didn't make sense. So I cut it off and then this guy grew in a lot faster and you can see like he is so, that is so gorgeous. Anyways, then we have my Milano Chrysum, which I recently cut and you guys saw the propagations earlier. Still waiting to see where it's gonna decide to grow back from, but we're gonna go fast because my camera keeps overheating because it's an old camera and I really need a new one. She's cute and we love her and she's doing really well right here, so. Then we have my new Pilea Peperomioides. I just got this guy, if you watched my most recent haul, you would have seen her. My star of the show, this is my Alocasia Friday. I love her so much, this is my second one. My first one died when one of my friends bumped into my shelf and the pot fell and Fred died, that was his name. This is Fred too. Then we have my Hoya Numularioides. This is working on new growth, I don't see any yet, but one day, maybe. Then we have my variegated watermelon Peperomia. This one is very variegated. This leaf is so white, it's just, it's not even like registering. Oh my gosh, that's so nice. Then we have my massive string of hearts. This is her, she is gorgeous. She goes all the way down to the floor. And I've been growing this for a long time. It really enjoys the grow lights. They're yeah. helping a lot. You're fine. Then we have <laughs> my Mikens. This is my third Mikens. He has some dying leaves. I transferred him pots and that always happens. So he'll be okay. He trails all the way down here and then angles towards the window. So then we have this. It's awesome. I got this as a birth, not a birthday gift, a graduation gift from, sorry for going too fast. It's very good. Got this as a graduation gift from a succulent day. It is a variegated oxalis. And I love her. Then we have another string of hearts right here, which is all tangled up with my micans. We have my Syngonium albo that is potted up. A Hartley fern that one of my patrons sent me and I love so much. Thank you so much, Miranda. My pink princess, which has just put out two new leaves. This is one of them. And this one is the other. She's work. Ooh, it looks like a half moon. Then we have this Adaba Poensi. I did sell this, um, but I had to refund the person because it started to get root rot, and so I've been monitoring it and making sure it's okay. My Philodendron Campos Pore Toanum hiding in the back here. This is the good leaf. This is the new one. Then we have my Skindapsis pictus, Silvery Ann. This guy is getting very big. This 
so I'm very impressed when I got him. He was just a wee little guy in this little pot, but now he's this big guy in this little pot. All right, then down here, we have my Boya Carnosa Crimson Princess, which is also coming through over here and giving us a bunch of new growth. And we have my Raphidophor Tetrasperma. This is the only Raphidophor I've ever gotten to give me a new leaf ever in my life. So I treasure this plant. And then back here, we have another Scandapsis Pictus Silvery Anne. Then right here, we have a Mangave Freckles and Speckles. I'm trying to find this guy a home because a local pick of home in Boise because I'm not really a fan. Then we have my Sansevieria Whale Fin, which I just potted up with Reed. You should definitely go watch that video. It's a super funny video. Bantel Sensation, which has been working on this new spike for like 10 months now, so <laughs> he's a slow grower. <laughs> we have, you'll notice some begonias are missing. I've had a very hard time taking care of begonias, so some of them did pass away. But this is my favorite begonia I have. This is begonia Jehoiai, and he is literally killing it. I don't know how to express my love for this plant other than just, I, I would die if I didn't have this plant. And I would die if it died, so. Then die we with. have, <laughs> die with, die. <laughs> then I have my begonia Milano Bellata, and this one is giving us a new leaf right there. So, I love it. Then back here we have my jewel orchids. So this is a variegated jewel orchid. I don't think it has a name. I think they discovered this plant species in 2017. So I think it's just called 2017. Like it has a species name, but I don't know what it is. And then, and the reason they're kind of wilty is because I just watered them. I wait until they droop to water them. And then this one, I mean, you'll see the names for these on the bottom of the screen, but so cool. isn't that incredible? So he's putting out a new leaf, which is nice. Then the only begonia I don't have in there is this one, which is doing really great, just right in front of my humidifier. I don't know if you can see, but we do have two plants. This one died, so I started propagating the stem and uh, it's doing great. And normally begonias don't like to get wet, but this is thriving in water, so. Yeah, and then this is the original, one of the original leaves. So, this is Begonia Curtisii Red Galaxy. I just got this in the mail today from Miranda, who also got me the Hartley Fern. This is a pink maidenhair fern. I did have one of these a while ago, but it was, I believe, the source of my thrips, so it got thrown away because it was basically dead, so. But can you see the pink? Is it coming through? It's so nice. This yeah. is my Atiba Poensi, we have a new leaf up here. Oh, it's so hard to see. A little bit, there we go. The newest leaf and then the back is bright red. Gorgeous. I don't know what this is. I don't know what it's trying to do, but th there's no way that will be viable. So, I don't know. <laughs> Hoya elliptica, Ooh. which is hilarious that I literally said it wrong for two whole videos, but she's doing good. Her leaves are recovering nicely. They're becoming hard again, so. Yeah, Hoya Elliptica, we love her. Then I have my uh, da, 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 Alocasia Cupria, who is giving us a new leaf, right here. Might actually be two new leaves, which is kind of interesting, but. Then we have my little Billy Ty. This is the one that I cut all the way down, so now he's growing from here. This is his first little, his first little leaf. Then, this is kind of cool. Over here, I don't know if I've ever shown you this, but this is another Adam Poincy growing out of my big pot. And this is a double leaf, which is crazy. And if you look closer, you can actually see it's a double petiole. So there's like a vein splitting it down the middle and that is so awesome. And we have another out of a poency right here. This is one of my, sorry, Reed. <laughs> this is one of my favorite plants ever. And we're getting a new leaf right here. Yeah, then sure. <laughs> down here, we have my Alocasia dragon scale. This gets pretty direct light, or not to light, um, direct humidity from my humidifiers, but I do think I am going to have to put him in a uh, in a little cloche because I don't think it's enough. I think mm -hmm. he needs, I think he needs more. And right here we have one of my plum manii, and if you'll notice, it is working on a leaf. It's very plump in that little area right now, which means we're gonna get a leaf here soon. And we have another one of those, which is giving us a leaf right now. This is my other plow manii. And I am so excited. Ooh, is it variegated? Oh no, it's not. I just forgot that it comes with silver. You guys can kind of see the silver, which is just incredible. Wow, that lens is very nice. 
<laughs> All right, then the last couple of pants I have over here are this variegated peace lily, which is absolutely incredible. I keep it in pretty much just, oh my gosh, it's giving me babies on the side. Are you kidding me? Wow, I feel special. <laughs> it's given me three new leaves, so can you see very well? Yeah. Okay, this leaf right here, this leaf, and this leaf are all new in my care. It gives me probably one leaf a week, which is just incredible because normally variegated plants grow super duper slowly, but this one grows really nicely. A variegated peace lily right here, which this new leaf didn't come in very variegated at all, so I'm a little nervous that it's just not gonna be variegated anymore, but. If it isn't, then we have these nice leaves to look back on and I'll just have a cute little piece of the to hang out with me. Then we have this Billa tie. It is so dark in this room. We have this Billa tie, which is nice. I've had this for a long time. Here's his newest leaf. Again, Billa tie leaves and Adiba Ponce leaves come in pretty small. You can see that I chopped him and that small leaf is the newest leaf. So once I give him something to climb, he will be growing much, much faster. Then uh, the last plant we have right here is my Vitarifolium anthurium, or anthurium vitarifolium. We are losing this leaf. I do not know why. I think it's because I treated him for pesticides, mm -hmm. or for pests with a pesticide, and I think it just bumped up this leaf. This is, this is the oldest leaf, and I do know that anthurium tend to lose older leaves, so. Sad to see him go, but it's been a long time coming because this is a new leaf right here. So I think we got a new leaf and they're just kicking the old leaf out. So here we have my Picola Banda, one of them. I love this guy a lot, one of my favorite plants. Another Staghorn Fern, I love this guy. Now this is sad, this is my Ring of Fire. I don't think it's gonna make it. Uh, it got really, really, really bad thrips and um, I think I think it's done. Raven, you don't need anything. <laughs> then up here we have my Senecio Macroglossus that I got as part of a sponsorship. And it's just kind of doing its own thing. I don't really need to talk about it more than that. We have a Bluefoot Fern, one of my favorite ferns. It's always putting out new leaves and then always losing old leaves. Then we have this gorgeous Calathea Orbifolia. This has got to be one of my very favorite plants I've ever owned. It is just like lush and perfect. And I, I could never have asked for a better plant ever. And I never even thought I'd get to own one of these. She's perfect. And then a couple of those plants I'm just not gonna talk about because they're having a hard time. Then we have my Calathea White Fusion, another one. These old leaves are bad from the nursery, but these new better ones are. <laughs> because of me. Then we have a Calathea Beauty Star, which I did recently get from Edwards. We got the new leaf to unfurl, and I am so happy. I have wanted these for a long time. Then we have my newest string of hearts. This is probably a month newer than my other ones, so he's not as long. He's still working on it, but he's a good guy. Then we have my big Mikans. This is my fourth Mikans. Did I talk about my other one? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. over there's my third. This is my fourth Mikan's. It's very big, very lush. Again, this was a sponsorship plant. I think I've only bought one of my Mikan's. Yeah, I've only purchased one. The other ones were gifts. And she's very, she's doing very nice. So I'm very happy with her. And then the last two plants that I have that I'm gonna tell you about is this Cebu Blue, which is so nice. I've had this plant since I lived in my college dorm and she just does so good. It's so easy to tell when they need water. Right now, how she looks is as healthy as anyone could ever look. It's just incredible. And it has this bluish tint. You couldn't ask for anything better. Then right here, we have a Euphorbia Amic. She's a little tilted. I need to repot her, and she's super pokey, so that's why I'm using this stick. But uh, she's a white cactus, basically. She's gorgeous, and I love her. And that is most of my house plants. I do have this one. This is the very first Cebu Blue I ever got. She is incredibly long here. I can just show you exactly what we're dealing with. She's very, very big. I absolutely love this plant and I'm going to try to keep it alive until I die someday. <laughs> and then, I mean, it's kind of sad, but she can be on my grave and she can live, she can outlive me. Anyways, she can live for you. Live for me. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna show you my balcony. Oh. Gonna give you a quick balcony tour. Real quick, I just wanna show you my bedroom. This is Chris. He's a human. That's crazy. Not a plant. <laughs> wow, look at this. Wow. 
Raven. <laughs> this is where my greenhouse used to be. Uh, right here, right where this table is. And um, now Raven's here. Now Raven. I moved the big cat tree here because it just thought it looked nicer. I am selling this table. If you want to buy it from me, please DM me on Instagram. <laughs> I'm selling it for $80. I bought it four months ago, brand new. And I've only ever used it to hold these and a couple of plants at one point. All right. Raven. Let's look, go to my balcony. Oh. <laughs> Oh, look at all my stuffed animals. That's my pride and joy next to my plants. I love my stuffed animals. And this stuffed animal, I love this one. Okay, so we're gonna have to be careful with how we do this. So we're outside. I'm gonna show you my outside plants. So over here I have my mealybug cacti. So we have my, I can't remember the species name, but it's a Furcuro curin yuzin boku or booby cactus. Then we have a um, Astrophyta Mario stigma. This is an Oz Ozuko or an Onzuka. I can't remember, but you guys will see the name on the bottom of the screen. And then this is a Sirius spiralis. They all have mealybugs, so I have to fix them. But over here, look, she loves that basket. That's crazy. So I have a Majesty Palm I got from Lowe's. This is a variegated maple tree and it is gorgeous. You wanna get closer? Mm -hmm. Look at this leaf in particular. It's absolutely amazing. I have another variegated maple tree down here. It does need to be watered. Don't freak out on me, I'm sorry. But it's a little crusty, so it's gotta get watered. And then this is, oh, what are you? But basically the leaves come in bright pink and then they fade to variegated green. How incredible is that? I got that at Home Depot. I have this guy. This is a bonsai that I bought. I don't understand why some of these maples are crusting up like this, because they're full sun plants. Like they like full sun. This one is clearly fine. So I don't know if I just need to water them, but I'm, I'm learning outside plants, okay? Please don't hang me because I'm learning outside plants and I'm learning my zone, so. Another Majesty Palm, because I just felt like this area needed to be more of a jungle than it was. So I got a second one pretty recently, actually. And then I put it in this little basket I found from Lowe's. Then I bought this massive, like absolutely monstrous fern. I also got this from Lowe's. And then look at this. I got this entire basket of string of dolphins for literally $10 at Lowe's. Are you kidding me? And then down here, we have my friend's uh, Sirius Pervianus, which looks like it hijacked part of my dolphin, my string of dolphins. So this is for Chloe, Chloe's cultivar. You guys can go follow her on Instagram. It's her first blue cactus. So I'm excited for her. But yeah, this is my, this is my little balcony. These little lanterns turn on. I do have lights for out here, but they fell down and I'm working on getting them to work again, so. Um, I filmed a video out here. Let me know if you guys want to see more videos for out here, because I wouldn't mind just filming out here. But. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and tweet me at Plant Me Ashley. Let me know what other videos you want to see that are in my home. And please support me on Patreon. The link is patreon.com forward slash Plant Me Ashley. You guessed it. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. Please like, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!